God's Will 4 is one of the most interesting games I've played in a while. It was developed by Clever Beans Limited and published by Koch Media, and the game I got was nothing like the game I expected. And even the eShop description categorises it as a fighting action game, which in all honesty doesn't do justice at all to some of its most interesting aspects. It would be more easily identified as a Souls-like, roguelite hybrid with handcrafted stages and an overworld area divided into a number of labyrinth-like dungeons, each with their own hideous boss. And you'll grow surprisingly attached to your band of merry Celts. But will you actually be able to keep them alive? Eh, let's find out. The story centers around a world where gods are the most cruel and twisted rulers. Hideous misshapen beasts and grotesque snake-like creatures wrap their tendrils around the world. These deities toy with the land and unleash hideous monsters upon it and suffering upon the populace. And just as all hope seems lost, humanity decides to fight back. Sending a party of their finest warriors, they head out to do battle. Unfortunately, your ship is sunk and you'll find yourself washed up on the shores of this god-ridden land. Each time you begin your adventure, you'll have eight new travelers with unique names, completely different looks and abilities as well as weapons and gear. And story and gameplay are intertwined in terms of your actions and outcomes, and I'll go into that a little bit more in the gameplay. You're absolutely free to roam on the island wherever you want, and you'll notice straight away that you're not just controlling one, but all eight of your fearless warriors. Some will be slow, but with much higher vitality bars, whereas others swift carrying faster weapons. Although not explicit, there is a class system here, with certain characters only able to use weapons which match this. Now spread over this island, are a number of different dungeons, and upon reaching one, you can then choose which party member to send in. And this really is where things get interesting. You'll be able to equip your fearless warrior with any special items that you've found. These can be quick toggled using the D-pad, and in they go. Their goal, simple really, go on a murderous rampage, defeat as many enemies as you can, and then simply kill a god. Nothing to it. Uh, yeah. Each stage has its own unique enemies. They have their own attack patterns, movesets, and you will need to use more than just that giant hammer to make your way through. Yeah. You can dodge in any direction pressing the A button, but by holding this down, you'll then sprint. One nice mechanic I like is the parry system, which, unlike many other games, is all tied to the dodge button. When an enemy goes to attack you, there's a flash of the weapon, be it white if standard or red if it's a more powerful uninterruptible attack, and to parry you'll have to press the evade button and move in that direction at exactly the right moment. This obviously causes your foe to stagger, allows you a window of opportunity to wail on them with light or heavy attacks, and perhaps most importantly, will fill a large quantity of your character's bloodlust meter which is over on the left hand side and which shares the same area as your health. And when your bloodlust is used, it restores your health. But if you've stored it up fully, it will also give you your character's unique ability. It's a nice twist on a familiar system and one which for the most part works really well. Other than that, you can knock enemies over, and incidentally enemies can trip over things and then end up flat on their face, and you can jump and do a heavy downward smash to knock them while they're down. There's no lock on mechanic. You control your character with the left stick and will be performing the attacks using a combination of the Y and X buttons. It's nice to see that they've allowed players to fully remap the buttons though, so if you prefer a different system, you can change it to exactly what you want. There are a number of different enemies, each with their own unique way of dispatching, and sometimes you'll find yourself massively outnumbered, and that's where the Bloodlust system really comes into its own, as your health will be knocked almost to the bottom, and performing a war cry, you're straight back into the game. If you find discarded weapons on the ground, they can be picked up and used until they break, or they can be turned into an improvised projectile. One aspect that perhaps doesn't work quite as well are the few stages that rely too heavily on platforming mechanics. On one particular run, I had to cross a very narrow bridge and I believe the game does stop you falling off there, but then as you move towards a ladder on the other side and find yourself falling off the edge of the cliff to your death, it's a little bit frustrating. It's not something that happened on any of the other stages, but the loss of one of these comes with quite the cost. If you do manage to scrape your way through to the boss at the end, which in all honesty isn't that difficult, the boss gods are far from a walk in the park. And it's here really where gods will fall, will either win or lose the vast majority of its players. Because on the one hand, being victorious is absolutely amazing and makes you feel incredible. If you're a player who gets easily frustrated, this potentially isn't the game for you. Because when you die, 
die, well, that character becomes imprisoned. You'll be taken back outside and you'll get to see the reactions of the other party members, which is one of my favorite storytelling moments, as particular ones such as a brother or a sister might be mortified to the point where they're enraged and they get more courageous and their statistics will go up. So using that character there is really the only option because if you then walk away and leave them there to go and fight at a different dungeon, they'll then feel horribly guilty and all of their stats will plummet for a time. And again, diving back into the dungeon with a revenge mission in mind, looking to rescue a sibling suddenly takes on a completely different feeling. And when you plunge your sword through the spider and he's finally dead as you step back out into the dazzling light the rest of your party will be screaming and cheering and your character awarded heroic status statistics will go up you may have found new weapons and gear that you can then distribute to the rest of your party and you'll be amazed by how much your own mood has changed based on what you've just played and i guess that in a nutshell is the magic of a good game the island itself hosts a number of other secrets there's a well where you can throw items into it and without spoiling it you may get something back in return as well as a few other secret areas each of the stages has such varied design and the weapons handle so differently you'll soon find your favourites. Discovering something like a shield can be a game changer, but the pain of losing one of your best never diminishes and neither does the desperation to get them back. God's Will Fall manages to take many elements that have been seen in other games and once again make them feel fresh. I'm not entirely convinced they've got the balance of difficulty right when it comes to stage progression and the final boss, but then would it be as enjoyable when you finally do take them down if it was a bit easier? I don't know if it would. And yes, if your entire team do perish, that's game over. And when you muster up the courage to do it all again, you'll have a brand new, completely unique group with their own abilities, weapons and gear. And once again, you'll get far too attached to them and probably get them all killed. I really enjoy the gameplay of God's Will Fall, but I'm fully aware that many players may find it a little bit too frustrating. If you are a fan of Souls games and you love skill-based combat, then you're going to be right at home. But when you stack it next to something like Hades, which manages to make continuously dying and trying, rewarding by intertwining the story through everything, I think there's perhaps a bit more they could have done in that regard. That being said, I've absolutely loved my time playing the game, and I know many of you will as well. Just bear those things in mind. I give gameplay 17 out of 20, and the controls score 18 out of 20. As far as visuals and performance go, God's Will Fall is one of the most beautiful games on Switch. It has a lovely art style. It falls somewhere between low poly, cell shaded, and some kind of oil painting. It runs, for the most part, at 30 FPS, although there were the occasional stutters and drops, and I experienced one crash on a boss fight where I had to go out to the main menu and then come back into the game and it seemed to fix it, and I definitely blame that for how quickly I died following it. Each of the different dungeons looks incredible. The colour palette used is so diverse, and whoever their artistic team are, they know how to put contrasting colours side by side to make the world pop. There's an excellent lighting system here, with real-time shadows cast by your party, and small details like how they all run at a slightly different speed, or have heavier animations for those more rotund characters. The same level of quality design goes for the island itself. As you move from area to area, lush grass will be replaced by barren sand or the rocky slopes as you head up into the mountains. In handheld mode, the game looks stunning. It seems again to be running at native resolution and it's a game that was made to be played in handheld. And the developers have taken the time to include a text size option allowing you to change it from small, medium or large, which makes a difference as there are a number of small handwritten notes in the world, but it tells me that they actually thought about the Nintendo Switch community when they made small decisions like that. The audio is on point and the music that is here is excellent. and narration first class, although it does do an excellent job of reminding you how bad you should feel that you just got Helga's brother killed. I love the visual style of this game and I wish we had more that looked like it on Switch. I do have to dock a couple of points because of the crash I experienced and a few minor frame drops, particularly in one stage. I give visuals and performance 18 out of 20 and the audio also scores 18 out of 20. 
God's War 4 will set you back £19.99 or your regional equivalent and the developers are already working on three DLC packs. It comes in at a slightly chunky 6.8 gigs, but for me £19.99 is a very good asking price for what is a very polished and unique experience. I just hope we get a physical version and I give value 18 out of 20. There are many developers still out there coming up with fresh and interesting ideas and new takes on familiar concepts. God's Will Fall scores a switch up score of 89%. Let me know down in the comments, is this another one you'll be wanting to pick up and that you're interested in or are you someone that finds yourself frustrated quite easily? A big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month and to all of you who watch the channel. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya! Every day goes by so fast And every moment counts, baby I don't wanna miss a thing We can sleep under the stars We can sleep under the stars Or hang out in hotel bars Driving somewhere in your car We can sleep under the stars We can sleep under the stars Under the stars Baby, I